Hello there, dear viewer. Today, once again, we have some boutique Blu-rays to talk about. As always, I have been voraciously watching as much as I possibly can, and even though I have 20 boutique releases to talk about in this video, from almost as many labels, I still have barely scratched the surface on all of the good stuff that is coming out at the moment. So I do believe we are living in one of the best times to be film collectors. And of course, the future is always uncertain, especially around physical media. So I'm taking this time just to be grateful and just to take in as much as I can. Maybe I'm taking it way too far and watching too much, but that's a topic for another day. I have Blu-rays from so many different labels, including Second Sight Films, Warner Archive, Criterion, Kino Lorber, Umbrella, Imprint, 88 Films, Studio Canal, and many more. So, in the interest of time, I'm going to keep it quite short on each one of these films. If you do want to know more about any particular title, feel free to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram and we can chat more there. So let's kick things off with the latest limited edition release from Second Sight Films. You know how much I love them, they do excellent work. And the latest is no different, it's the film The Borderlands, which, not to be confused with the video game adaptation that is coming out very soon, this is a found footage horror movie set at a church where some spooky stuff is going on, and some investigators from the Vatican have come to set up cameras and equipment to try and capture exactly what is going on, because they aren't sure whether the local people are just making it all up. As with many found footage horror movies, it is low budget, you can kind of feel that, but this is one of the most exciting found footage films I've seen in a long time. And I don't want to spoil where the story goes, but the ending just left me absolutely shocked. So The Borderlands, a really great film, and Second Sight have given it this great limited edition package, as always. You get a thick booklet, you get some art cards inside, and you get the Blu-ray. So this is a great addition to my ever-growing Second Sight films collection. Sticking with the lovely limited editions, all the way from the other side of the world, Australia. It's Flesh and Blood. This is Paul Verhoeven's crazy medieval film which starts off feeling a bit like a family adventure romp like Indiana Jones or some kind of other Spielberg movie and then it goes into some very dark places with some dead babies and all sorts of weird stuff. This was an early entry in Verhoeven's Hollywood film career so he even talks about it in some of the special features on here that he was taking the advice of a lot of these American studio producers and he believes that's why the film has turned out not how he wanted it to. I still find it a very enjoyable film to watch, very weird, some great design choices and Rutger Hauer in the leading role. As you can see the Umbrella Limited Edition is beautiful. Inside you get the disc which is also in a slip cover, you get a booklet and some art cards. So another great limited edition I'm glad to add to my collection. Next I have two releases from 88 Films, a label that my admiration just keeps getting stronger as the days go by. The first film I want to talk about is The Inspector Wears Skirts 2, obviously the sequel to the first film which is the second in a series of four I believe and 88 Films have more of these planned to come in the near future. My experience with these two films so far is that this is basically a Hong Kong riff on the Police Academy series, but from a female perspective, where they have to deal with a lot of obnoxious men and they prove that they really can, you know, kick ass. If you're interested in that, obviously start with the first film. Don't start with the second one. And I think the second one does sort of dip in quality compared to the first. It loses Cynthia Rothrock, who is great in the first film. It also plays on a lot of the same beats that were in the first film, but that's exactly my kind of thing, so more of the same was good for me. It's a great blend of action and comedy, so I recommend it to anyone who is dipping their toes into this wave of great Hong Kong stuff that we're getting on Blu-ray at the moment. If you get this film soon, it comes with the limited edition slipcover, and inside there is the case with a reversible sleeve, so you can have the original artwork. And on the disc, a great commentary from Frank Jeng, as always, and some interviews and other stuff, so thoroughly recommend it. The other film that I got from 88 Films is Si Beauty of Beauties, 
This is a Taiwanese film from the 1960s, and this has been restored on 4K. This is a historical epic story focusing on the raging rivalry between two Chinese kingdoms, and at the centre of it is one of the great beauties. You see right from the start of the film that this really is an epic film because there are so many extras in the opening scene, like probably over a thousand. Obviously, I didn't count them all, but this is like epic scale stuff. I do find the history of this film quite interesting because this actually begun life as two separate films. And what is presented here is kind of two films smushed together to make one film. You can tell when watching this cut of the film that it has been spliced together from two separate films because some of the editing is quite jarring. And actually the titular beauty of beauties is not in the film as much as you would expect. A lot of it is just people sitting around in courtrooms talking. So on first watch, it didn't quite capture me as much as I thought it would because I thought I was going to fall head over heels in love with this one. In the end, I enjoyed it, but I wish I could have seen it in its original form of two different films. Again, you get the great slipcover from 88 Films with the disc inside. And on the disc, there is a great introduction or discussion on the film by Tony Raines, who is an expert on all things Asian cinema. So another great disc from 88 Films. And it's just great to have this film in what they say is the only surviving version of the film. So I probably will never get to see the original form. Moving on, I've got some Warner Archive titles. The first one, Stand and Deliver, with Edward James Olmos and Lou Diamond Phillips. This is a great film, which I'd never seen before, about a mathematics teacher in an inner city Los Angeles school where the kids are just sort of running wild and don't really care too much for education. He ends up turning things around and getting them interested in advanced calculus and, you know, really turning around the performance of the kids at the school. It's based on a real story. I don't know if the actual real story turned out how it did in this film, but I love this. I thought the relationship between the teacher and the students was very touching. And, you know, it really does hammer home how important teachers are. When you get a good teacher, and I had some good teachers, at my time in school, it really does make a difference in the development of young people. So a great disc from Warner Archive. Very glad to have this in the collection. I also picked up Three Godfathers, the John Ford, John Wayne film, which has only just come to Blu-ray for the first time from a stunning 4K restoration by the folks at Warner. This tells the story of these three bandits, outlaws, thieves who come across this woman and her newly born child when they are stranded in the middle of the desert looking for water. And it's in that interaction between these three guys and the woman and her baby that it starts to question whether bad guys are always bad guys. Can people be turned around? Can they repent for their sins and actually become good members of society. The story has been told time and time again. This is only one of quite a few film adaptations, but this is great. John Ford, I mean, one of the masters of American cinema and a beautiful film. The 4K restoration on this really is stunning. So I thank Warner Archive for continuing this great work, unearthing these films that would otherwise get neglected. Another great Warner Archive release is They Drive By Night. This is starring a number of great Hollywood legends, some of them before they became leading actors, namely Ida Lupino and Humphrey Bogart. These were playing second fiddle to basically George Raft in the leading role. The story follows these two truckers who are just trying to make a good living in life, but they get mixed up with some women and some trouble and it all goes from there. I recently talked about Raoul Walsh on the channel when discussing Roaring Twenties, another great film, and it's it's wonderful to see his films getting more attention on Blu-ray because there's still quite a few of them that I have to discover. So this is another one which I loved having. I've got two more Warner Archive titles. This one, Money Talks, the film starring Chris Tucker and Charlie Sheen. Chris Tucker plays a guy who is on the run mistakenly and the only person that can help him is Charlie Sheen, this journalist who can sort of clear his name. And there's a lot of comedy, a lot of action that ensues. Directed by Brett Ratner, and this is sort of a bit of a 
prototype for what he would do with the Rush Hour films. I don't think it reaches the height of some of what Brett Ratner would do later on in his career. I think this was his first film, but it is still an enjoyable watch and I had a great time with it. There is a known issue with the audio on this disc, by the way. It's said as having 5.1 surround sound on the back when in actual fact it only has a mono track, um, but there is a disc replacement service on the way. So just bear that in mind, it's getting fixed, which is great. And then we have the Silent Classics double feature with Why Be Good and The Boob. These are two films coming to Blu-ray for the very first time, I believe. This is certainly one for the silent fans, though, in my opinion, it's a mixed bag because one of these films is really rather good and the other one is really rather not, in my opinion. It's more of a historical piece to observe and look at. That's the boob. The boob, for me, didn't really work. Although it's nice to see an early performance from Joan Crawford, unrecognisable. And it's one of the earlier directing jobs from... William A. Wellman, who would go on to do a lot more in his career later. However, Why Be Good is really good, with Colleen Moore, a sort of lost actress of the period who is now sort of being rediscovered. Particularly for me with this film, I'm discovering her. So I had a great time with that, and that film alone is well worth the purchase. But it's nice to get two films at once, and seeing more of these silent films coming to Blu-ray is music to my ears. Very, very briefly, I'm just going to quickly mention the two Eureka discs that I spoke about in a video just a few days ago. These are the first stateside releases from Eureka. You've got The Cat and the Canary, another great silent film from Paul Lenny, and you've got Black Mask starring the great Jet Li. So I had a great time with these and I thoroughly recommend these. If you want to find out more, just go and watch that video I posted a few days ago. Two Films now on Blu-ray from Studio Canal. The first one is The Comedy Man. This is starring Kenneth Moore in what is absolutely not a comedy. It's very misleading. I guess that's kind of the irony of the title. Kenneth Moore plays a struggling actor who gets fired and then in a turn of luck his career starts to change towards advertising and he's getting paid to be in these advert campaigns but really he doesn't like it. He wants to work in the theatre do proper acting and it's his inner struggles but also his external struggles with other people and it's a very complex look at being a creative and struggling to find your way in life. What makes it all the more interesting is this mirrors Kenneth Moore's artistic trajectory because by this point he was sort of waning in his career. He wasn't getting many roles and this might be the last great thing he did, I don't know. But I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm so glad that Studio Canal are continuing to release great stuff from their vintage classics line, delving into the vaults of British cinema because there's so much there that can be uncovered. And I think this is a real gem, but not a cheery film for sure. Another vintage classic from Studio Canal, Room at the Top, starring Lawrence Harvey, Simone Signore, Directed by Jack Clayton. For myself, this is one of the great British films of the late 50s, early 60s period when we would start to see the British new wave coming into action. This is a film that is looking at class structures in this country and taking sort of a leaf out of the book of Italian neorealism. This was shot in a number of different places showing the streets of this country. This is post-industrial Yorkshire. It was actually filmed a lot in Bradford and it's interesting looking at how the streets looked in this film compared to how they look now because sadly that area has continued to decline and there are some beautiful shots in this film and I actually went on Google Maps afterwards, went on the exact streets and unfortunately they do not look like that anymore. Anyway, a brilliant film, one of my favourites. This is actually the second version I own because I have the older BFI Blu-ray release, which is, I think, pretty much exactly the same, except on this there is a new conversation with Delina Kidd on Room at the Top. The audio commentaries on here are carried over from that older release. I couldn't find it on my shelves anywhere, so I'll have to look that up afterwards. So I think if you've got the BFI disc, you probably don't need this unless you are a fanatic about this film but yeah I love it I want more people to see this Jack Clayton as well an absolutely underrated 
filmmaker in British film history. I have a 4K disc from Classic Flicks. It's Mickey Spillane's I, the Jury. This is on a 4K disc and there is a 3D disc included as well. This is a film noir from the early to mid 50s when that type of filmmaking was already starting to head on its way out. And, and at times this film does almost verge into parody of what film noir is. You have Biff Elliott as Mike Hammer playing the absolute stereotypical noir leading man with some absolutely noirish dialogue that is so sharp in the classic noir fashion that it's actually rather funny. Now I say all this not to insult the film because I do find it very enjoyable indeed. It is just very very film noir. There isn't really any other way to describe it. I watched the 4K disc. I did not watch the 3D Blu-ray because I don't have a player or the setup to do so. But the 4K disc did look rather good. There's no HDR on the 4K, which uh, I'm not sure if the restoration was done without the intention of doing HDR or whether, I don't know, there was just some kind of choice not to use it. But anyway, if you're a fan of film noir, and classic cinema in that sort of fashion, I highly recommend checking this film out. Another 4K I watched, John Frankenheimer's The Train, classic film, Burt Lancaster, I love this film. One of the best films of the period. Frankenheimer, absolute legend. I really want more people to watch his films because, you know, he is known, he is appreciated, but more people need to check out his films. This is an absolute thrill ride, beautifully shot. The 4K is stunning, absolutely the best version. It replaces my older Arrow video disc, which you can see here, which is from many, many years ago. It's the story of this stolen artwork that has been taken by the Nazis on this train, and Burt Lancaster and his team have to try and stop this train at all costs. Not much more to say, it's one of the best films of the 60s and the 4K is incredible. Sticking with the 4K is going in a completely different direction now. It's All Ladies Do It. If you haven't heard of Tinto Brass, he makes these erotic films but with a sort of art house lens. So they aren't just deemed as complete trash. There are people out there who think, you know, these are masterpieces of cinema. I'm sort of in between. Sometimes I sort of look at his films and go, yeah, this is a bit too much. And other times I actually really admire how these films look and how they play out. I admit that this will absolutely not be for everyone, but Cool Epics have done a great job with this. The 4K restoration looks beautiful. And if you're in the market for a Tinto Brass movie on 4K, then they've done a great job and they're doing more of them. So I, I do want to check those out as well. You get a booklet and you get art cards inside. I can't show you them, obviously because of the nudity, but it is a great release and this will replace my old Arrow Video Blu-ray. Now one from a label that I don't have any films in my collection. It's the film Impulse, released by Grindhouse Releasing, starring William Shatner, directed by William Graffay. This is an absolutely insane, unhinged film, with William Shatner giving it his absolute all. He plays this psychopathic killer whose next target is this young woman who happens to have a young daughter and she is getting in the way of Shatner's character doing what he wants. It really is a very strange film but one that has such a charm to it especially like I said because of Shatner's performance. I had a great time with this. This version is taken from a 4k restoration of a surviving positive print so it's not taken from the negative because that's long been destroyed or lost but it looks great it has that kind of late night cinema feel to it and I just had a great time with it tons and tons of special features across the discs here and it's in this great slipcase so Grindhouse releasing I'm going to have to go and get more of their stuff because I was so impressed with this one now I have something from imprint it's the film Green Ice starring the late Ryan O'Neill this cover poster is absolutely not indicative of what this film is like really. It's set in Mexico and it follows this guy who's an engineer who gets wrapped up in this romance with this woman who is herself engaged to this rich wealthy emerald mine owner played by Omar Sharif by the way. She suspects that he is a murderer so she wants to get revenge on him 
by raiding one of his stashes of these rare emeralds. If it sounds a bit convoluted and a bit nonsensical, that's because it is. It doesn't really make a lick of sense. However, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's crazy and weird, and it is not Ryan O'Neill's best performance by a long shot. However, still a lot of fun to have here. The presentation is taken from a new scan of the original camera negative, and it does look great on the Blu-ray, which I am thankful to report. So, Green Ice from Imprint, a great surprise, a very weird film. Only a few more to go now. This next one is a Criterion disc, which I talked about recently on the channel. It's All That Money Can Buy, directed by William Dieterle. A Faustian tale about a farmer who makes a deal with the devil himself to grant him riches and luck, but in seven years' time he's going to come and collect his debt, which is the man's soul. It's a brilliant story with some expressionist lighting in the film, very atmospheric, very dark, and a superb performance from Walter Houston. I've got two more films to mention now. These two are not actually boutique Blu-rays, but I thought I would mention them here because why not? And I just want to talk about them. The first one is Next Goal Wins. This is Taika Waititi's film about an American Samoan football team who are absolutely terrible and they get in this new coach from abroad to kind of whip them up into shape to win some games. He is a very sort of hard-nosed guy. He's ignorant. He's very kind of curmudgeonly in a way. And on first meetings, he just doesn't gel with the team and the players at all. He is very much a fish out of water. And he has to undergo some changes to actually get the team to where they want to be. This film was actually shot all the way back in 2019, I think, but it's only just come out recently. I don't particularly know why it was shelved for a few years, uh, but a lot of people have not taken warmly to this film. I certainly don't think it's any sort of masterpiece. And I totally get why people don't like this film when they're coming off the back of something like Jojo Rabbit. Nevertheless, I'm a bit of a sucker for these sports stories of turning around teams and people changing and yeah i enjoyed it it's not the best but yeah i had a good time with it speaking of another sports movie but one that is absolutely brilliant one of the best films i've seen in recent times it's the iron claw directed by sean durkin based on the real story of the von eric wrestling family who went through so many tragedies that it was deemed that there was some kind of curse on the family. It's a heartbreaking story of brotherhood and a very kind of malicious father figure. It's very touching, very well directed. I loved all the wrestling stuff as well. And if there was any one complaint I have, I actually wish there was a bit more wrestling in it. It's just an absolutely spectacular film, shot beautifully. It evokes the period so well with the soundtrack choices. I loved it. So if you can get your hands on this, definitely check this one out. I think that about does it. That was way too many Blu-rays to talk about in one video. I can barely even talk at this point. So I'm going to call it a day there. Thank you very much for watching this. I actually don't expect anyone to stick around this late and hear what I'm saying now. So if you happen to make it this far, leave a comment down below saying Elliot loves green ice. If you want even more recommendations from me, Click the video presented on screen right now. You can get lots more just like this from myself. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.